Aloha, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about units of measurement, more specifically jiggers. Now if you don't know what a jigger is, it's these metallic objects and you've probably seen them in some of your better cocktail bars. And as a matter of fact, if you do go into a bar and you're thinking about ordering one of their craft cocktails or one of their high-end cocktails that's $12 or more and you don't see one of these, get a beer, get a wine get a rum and coke, gin and tonic, whatever, but do not get a cocktail because if they are not measuring the drinks properly, it's going to be unbalanced. Um, if you just want something strong, then just order vodka on the rocks or scotch on the rocks or whatever, but you're not going to be able to make a good craft cocktail if you are not measuring the ingredients. When I first started out, um, I got one of these. This is pretty cool. I don't know how accurate it is, but it had the half ounce, one ounce, one and a half ounces there. Then I moved up to one of these, which is really great because it's got ounces, teaspoons, tablespoons, milliliters. Um, it's got like four different units of measurement here. The problem with all this stuff is, is that if you really are mixing and making good use of it, these things break and they break very easily and you want to be spending a lot of money or have glass all over the bar. That, that wouldn't be cool. You really should look into buying a good stainless steel jigger. Um, and as you can see, there are a great many deal of them. You definitely want to get this from some place that is known for making jiggers. Um, you don't want to go to your cheap store and get one of these. Um, not only can you tell that it doesn't have the right increments, but it's marked in 20, milliliter, 20 milliliters and 40 milliliters. Um, typically an ounce is 30 milliliters and a half ounce is 15. So what you're going to do with these measurements, uh, I don't know probably not much because even if you were going to do an ounce and a half that's 45 milliliters not 40 so I, these these cheap uh, knockoff items I don't have much faith in then maybe they look cool behind the bar but they're not useful so we're not going to use that this other one is pretty cool it's nice it comes in three quarter ounce and half ounces and this is good um, for smaller ingredients but but I want one jigger that does everything and so that basically boils it down to these two. The color style doesn't matter. Um, you could choose whatever color you want, but just keep in mind if you're gonna if you're lazy like me and you want to throw this in the dishwasher, then guess what? This this finish is gonna come off. It says it's plated. It's not plated. It's plated with acrylic copper. So yeah, this one and this one. They actually used to be the same color, but after so many uses, it just started to peel off. So go with your good old-fashioned stainless steel. This way you could drop it, you could dent it, um, you could stick it in the dishwasher, you could do whatever, and you're going to save yourself $10 on top of it. Um, again, if you just want to keep this behind the bar to look fancy, you know, that's up to you. But for me, I want something practical. And it comes down to these two. And um, this taller one, this is if you're doing straight spirits. So if you're going to get whiskey, they're going to charge you typically by the ounce or the ounce and a half, and that's where these taller ones come into play. This other one called the Leopold Jigger, it's much more practical. It's got the increments on the inside, and it's got all of them. This goes right from a half ounce to three quarter ounce to an ounce and a half. This one will give you everything from a quarter ounce all the way up to two ounces. And um, even if you had to measure a quarter of an ounce, you just fill it halfway up. And that should do it because I don't think a milliliter in that sense is going to make or break the cocktail. The last consideration is probably one of the most important. And that is if you want to go with the metric system or the American or Imperial uh, units, which is ounces. Now, any cocktail book that I ever pick up is in fact in ounces. Of course, most of the rest of the world, including Europe, are going to give you the measurements in milliliters. Um, the issue I have with milliliters is that if a half ounce is 15 milliliters, how are you possibly going to measure uh, 7.5 for a quarter of an ounce? Or three and a quarter for an eighth of an ounce? Um, it gets tricky, and I know half a milliliter most likely isn't going to affect anything, but most bartenders I speak to, or master mixologists, they all agree that the ounces is the way to go because it goes in uh, pretty divisible numbers. It's a personal preference. 
I like the ounces better because again, most of the cocktail books I look at, that's the unit of measurement. The great thing about these is it's got all the measurements from a quarter of an ounce up to a full ounce. And if you flip it over, you got an ounce and a half, or if you fill it to the top, two ounces. It's very precisely measured. This is the way to go. This is my favorite one, or my favorite style, I should say. Now, with some of your thicker ingredients like honeys and syrups, you generally want to pour those first because a lot of that is going to stick to the sides. So then when you put in your next ingredient like lime juice, which is acidic, and, and spirits and rum and vodka or whiskey or whatever, it's going to wash out the rest of that syrup or honey, and, and that's the way to go. Uh, some people build their cocktails from the thickest ingredients to the thinnest to wash it everything out so the measurements are perfect. Other people do it from the least expensive ingredient to the most expensive ingredient. Uh, generally, everybody normally puts the spirits last because that typically is the most expensive ingredient. Mahalo for joining us. Hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Mm -hmm.